Last week, I sat with you, Attorney Sachs, in his office. Watch the video of you. I'm glad I get to see your face right now. Of you killing my daughter for the very first time. You see, all those video evidence that was shown in this courtroom, we didn't see it. Maybe that was to protect us, to protect the public. We didn't see it. But heading into this week, I was searching for answers for clarity. And I sat with Attorney Satz, and I watched you kill my daughter on video. And unfortunately, I saw you killing many of the others as well. I saw you enjoying it. And I saw also what I expected of my daughter, who was the toughest human being on the face of the earth, running for her life down the hallway. And the thing is, my daughter made it to within one second of being alive. She actually made it into the stairwell. You shot her with a single shot. You severed her spinal cord, her chest filled with blood in the stairwell. You did that. You did that to the other 16 as well. After I sat with Mike, I did what I often do. I went to the cemetery looking for guidance from Jamie for strength. And I walked away from the cemetery realizing no matter the outcome of the verdict, nothing changed. Jamie's still at the cemetery. Nothing changed. I'm still a dad who spent every day dreaming of walking his daughter down the aisle, who now will have to endure a lifetime of the reality that I won't get to walk my daughter down the aisle. There are, actually, by a show of hands, anyone else in this room, because of him, going to have to endure not watching people they love get married? I am a person who has to endure the fact that my daughter is not in the college of her dreams because of you. Out of curiosity, does anyone else in this room have to endure the fact that their loved ones aren't in college? Because of you, I've had to endure spending Father's Day. My wife has had to endure spending Mother's Day. We've had to endure spending our time for birthdays at a cemetery. Anyone else because of him have to endure those things? Yeah. Anyone who claims that they had to endure anything close to what we endure, you may want to rethink your language and your choice of words just a bit. I look at you sitting there right now, looking the way you should have looked through the entire trial, like a convicted murderer, in your prison outfit, shackled. It is still incomprehensible to me that when we went through the penalty phase of this trial, which you were already a convicted murderer for, that you were able to sit there looking like howdy doody in whatever outfit they felt like putting you in for the day. Your hairstyle, your mask on, your seat really low like a little boy. Faking out the jury as to who you really are. We endured months of watching that show. It was BS. But you put on a great show, I'll tell you that. You did your job. You got him from not getting the death penalty. You all can't understand the pain that we go through. But what I will say is that statement yesterday, I actually believe it, that Public Defender Weeks believed it. I actually think you all believe it, that you've endured something worse than us, which is why you've behaved the way you have with us. Months we've been here, not a single one of you has actually ever even looked in our direction, made an effort to say, we're sorry for your loss, ever. Now, I understand you had a job to do defending the indefensible, defending a mass murderer of 17 people. 
I understand that was hard. And you were doing your job as you were required to do. But I'm not sure anywhere along the way there was a requirement that you give up your humanity and you give up your decency, but you did. That was a choice you made. I got your email apologizing for the middle finger stunt. I have it, okay? Laughing with him as you're doing it. And the crazy thing is, I've reread it multiple times. You actually didn't apologize to us. You apologized that you didn't know the camera was on while you were doing that, that you got caught. That's what we've had to endure, okay? Because we've always seen you all turning this into that. But again, if you didn't get the death penalty, you did your job. I hope you're all proud of yourselves. You know, I believe in the Ringo Starr philosophy of life, peace and love. I do. So with that, I need to address some of the other comments from Mr. Weeks yesterday, suggesting that our families were inciting violence, comparing it to what happened to Speaker Pelosi. <laughs> When that happened yesterday, my wife, I, I started screaming in the house. So what I need to let you all know, all of our families, because of what you did, I didn't know them before. I knew nothing about them. We've all got to know each other. And every single one of these families, because of what you did, is doing amazing things in this country today in the name of safety, in the name of saving lives, in the name of making sure our schools are safer, our streets are safer. I travel this country. I haven't worked since what you did, a real job anyway. I travel the country going to harass politicians to make sure we can do more to reduce gun violence. That's what I do now. And along that path, since we, Mr. Weeks brought up the name Speaker Pelosi yesterday, implying we're trying to incite some kind of violence, here's the crazy thing. Because of what I do, I actually know Speaker Pelosi. I know her well. And anyone who follows my story knows she's a really important person to me in my life. And so I don't know if Public Defender Weeks is in the room or not, but for him to have trivialized and minimize that real act of violence to make a moronic, stupid point? Shame. That's all I can say, shame. I'm gonna end with this. For almost five years, we've been silent. We were silent through this trial. We sat here, we held it in, but I'm gonna share something personal. On the day of the medical examiner visits where they discussed Jamie. I need you all to know, because this gets back to the word endure, what we endure, that while I was sitting there, I was having chest pains and shortness of breath. And you wanna know, I didn't say a word, because I didn't wanna hear you call to the judge, because it happened in front of the jury, and ask for a mistrial. And so I sat there with chest pains. And the second the public, I'm sorry, the second the medical examiner finished talking about my daughter, my wife immediately got me out of the room. And I ended up with weeks of testing from a cardiologist, and thankfully I am okay. I have a broken heart, but I am okay. But the need to sit here silently while you all did what you did, while you had a neighbor who you put on this little show running around the room who didn't really know him. He lived in a house behind a house across the street, met him once in person. He ended up under cross-examination acknowledging that. You actually spoke about the neighbor in your closing statement. But the neighbor didn't actually know him. Okay? We watched this. We endured this. And yeah, it got to be too much at times that I developed a health issue over it. But again, I am okay, and I'm gonna be okay. And I am gonna go forward with my wife 
And we are going to continue to build our foundation, our ribbons for Jamie. And everyone else back there, they're going to continue to build their amazing foundations, doing all the amazing work that they do. Just so you know, because of you, our foundation is starting a new program called Pause of Love. We're going to be providing emotional support dogs to victims of gun violence. So the next time somebody does what you did, we'll be there for them. That's who we are. To suggest for one second that we would be the kinds of people, or anyone back there would be the kinds of people who would incite violence, you all should be ashamed of yourselves. But you said it. Can't take it back now. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm only looking to see two more things happen today. One will be your formal sentencing of him. And the other one, I want to see Gordon Weeks resign before the end of the day today. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. McCann, if you